as the males, but they are a completely different colour. Hold on one more, here we go. Now, as you guys want to have a look at those beautiful colours, we have Liz. Liz. This is Liz. Now, I think this parrot's like Liz I found up in Tropical Farm North Queensland. And it's the male's job to spend most of the time up in the tops of those rainforest trees, in the canopies, where those green feathers on his back help him to camouflage or blend into the surroundings. So if you're a bird of prey flying above, much like River, then when you're looking down looking for a nice yummy bird to eat, you can't really see these guys when they're up foraging at the tops of those trees. Now you guys got a better look, but underneath his wings, you want to show your wings? There we go. It is a bit windy today. See? Underneath his they wings, follow their every cool color. They're so intelligent. The fruits, flowers, berries, things like that at the tops of those rainforest trees as well. This one might be a little tricky into the wind. There we go. So you can see he's pretty amazing. He's got some pretty amazing colors. And I did mention the females are just as colorful as the males. But they are a completely different color. And that's because they don't spend most of their time sitting in the tops of those rainforest trees like the males. They'll actually spend up to eight months of the year sitting in the shadows, in nesting hollows, where they need to be dark enough to blend into their surroundings there, but also bright enough so that males like this can actually see them. So they're a dark red and purple with a bit of blue and a completely black beak. They're very, very different looking birds. Now with these birds, it's not the biggest, brightest male that gets the female. It's actually the one who brings the female the yummiest food. So during the breeding season, males like those will be going around and getting the biggest, best piece of yummy food he can find. That's your food to leave. There we go. Well done. <laughs> and he'll be taking it to his girlfriend and three or four other girls every single day trying his luck with a Mitchell's or a pink cockatoo. Also flying over is our red-tailed black cockatoo. Two of the most beautiful parrot species in the world. As well as looking really nice, they've got something else in common. And that's that in the wild, they rely on large territories. Have a look when he lands that crest to go up. Isn't that beautiful? So in the wild, they rely on large territories. And in those territories, they need tree hollows for nesting and shelter. You can see they're pretty big birds, especially our red-tailed black cockatoo. He's going to fly up over here in a minute, and you'll see him fan out that tail. Those solid red bands on the oh. So... We are losing their tree hollows to deforestation. We're turning those tree hollows into a very sick of product. And it is a product that we need to continue to use every single day, but it's not actually us. Now this is Millie, our barking owl. Barking owl is actually a member of the hawk owl family. They have very hawk-like features. While Millie's out here, we're going to talk about some of the adaptations that owls have to be very successful at night time. Dude, that was super close. <laughs> he didn't even realise. Has no idea what happened then, but that's all right. So owls, obviously extremely well adapted for hunting at night time. They've got much better eyesight than we have, as you can see, massive large forward facing eyes. They have way better hearing than we have. In fact, their hearing is so good that these birds can pinpoint and catch their prey without even having to see it. So they are superbly adapted for the night time. You also notice while Millie's out here that she turns her head around quite a lot. Owls are actually capable of turning their head in an arc of 270 degrees, which is a lot further than you and I can. That allows them to spot anything that might be sitting directly in behind them. They can pounce down upon it and catch it if they need to. They're also capable of silent flight. Owls have specially adapted feathers to allow for really silent flight. That means they can sneak up on the prey. That prey would include things like our small mammals, small not <laughs> nocturnal marsupials, things like possums and gliders. It also includes lots and lots of rodents, things like rats and mice. And then our owls because do feed very heavily on mice. Some of you might have heard of the barn owl before. We have a pair of barn owls in one of our aviaries. I don't know if you want to stop and looking at those. But a pair of barn owls are thought to catch up to about 2,000 mice a year. And that helps us keep those Whoa, what the? Barn owls are one of the birds that do really well out there in the wild. Unfortunately, barking owls are nearly here. That's so cute. They're not doing so well at all. In fact, <laughs> Barking owls here in Victoria are a threatened species. We only have around about 50 pairs of barking owls left in Victoria, so we really need to start looking after the environment a lot better to keep beautiful birds like barking owls around forever. So, Jason mentions barn owls. 
While barn elves have adapted to nesting in barn sheds and houses, barking elves like Millie rely on tree hollows for nesting and shelter. They're the same made from trees, and trees are for these beautiful birds. Every year in Australia, we're flushing 7 million trees in this one. That's where we go. We're flushing 7 million trees down our toilet every year. But what can we do? We can wipe the wildlife. What that means is making a switch to using 100% so recycled toilet paper. Them. That's old office paper that gets recycled into toilet paper. And it means that trees get to stay in the ground where they belong. It's a really, really easy thing to change. What we'd like you to do today is make the first step of any promise and that, oh, sorry, the first step of any change, and that is to make a promise or a pledge to making that change. What we'd like you to do, we're going to meet, is a master mimic. He's a very intelligent bird, this one here. I'd like to introduce you to Kevin. Kevin is a long billed Pirella. He thinks he's the star of the show. So much so, he demands his own microphone. So, Kev, would you like to say hi? Hi. Wow. Yeah, Today we've talked about adaptations. We've seen some pretty amazing adaptations. There's one that's important for most birds. Kev's going to show you exactly what that is. Kev, what is the most important adaptation? Wind. 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 Yeah. We saw Millie. We talked about owls turning their heads in an arc of 270 degrees. That's nothing. Kevin goes way better. Kev, how far rank can you see? That's not very far. How far rank can you see? He does check for the young man later there. And we saw River the Black Knight for way too long this morning, but we talked about him catching food in the air with his feet. Again, pretty impressive footwork. He just nodded. Kevin's going to go one better. He can show me his right foot and his left foot. Come <laughs> crowd, Kevin, that's okay. Kevin and I really like that he can do that because we know people that don't even know their left and their right. So I reckon he's doing pretty well. In fact, if he keeps that behaviour up, he's going to be dancing soon. Oh, yeah. Good dance, Kevin. Good job. Well done. Now, when people come and see the spirit show, they often think it's the birds of prey that are scary, and no one really thinks the parrots are scary. Well, let me tell you, Kevin is the scariest bird we've got. He's about as scary as a tiger. <laughs> you want to see it now? No, you don't have to be. He's only joking. He's only pretending. In fact, sometimes I really just think he's having yeah. a little bit of a laugh. <laughs> And we've all seen some pretty good birds here today, but all birds are cool, aren't they, Kev? Yeah, that's right. So we need to look after all those birds out there in the wild, not just the ones we've seen here today. Now, because Kevin does think he's the star of the show, we'd like to all give him a big round of applause. Good yeah, job, Kevin. All right, good job. Well done, Kevin. All right, up to go. Well done today, Kev. Luckily for the long bill parrots, they are meters. Our largest raptor here in Australia. They also have a nice long wedge shaped tail where they get their name from. The wedge tail they go. I think it's the wedge tail. When you come down, huh? you will see that she is a really big bird. Whoa! She's about 22 years old. So she's almost black in some parts. And I'm going to try and get one last long fly out of her tail. Oh, man, she's so close. She was so close. We need to come over here. This is something we've been trying to work on with Magro. See if we can get her to come over onto this, this branch over here. Magro, come on, you can do it. Is the wind going the right way today? Anyway, okay. We're not going to waste too much time on that. It might be too difficult for her today. But as I was saying, you can see she's a really dark coloured bird because she is an adult bird. Now, eagles have got amazing eyesight. They can see a moving rabbit from over a kilometre away. And rabbits make up a large part of an eagle's diet. But they do hunt other things. They occasionally hunt other birds. They occasionally hunt reptiles. But they're actually capable of hunting mammals up to the size of an adult wallaby all by themselves. Now, I have no idea what's going to happen here, guys, so just brace yourselves. I don't know whether she can do this or not. But hopefully we'll get another nice one flight out of it. Here we go. Oh, we couldn't do it. She tried though. I think the wind is just just no. nice nice one flight today. So that is also very territorial. We see eagles flying through the sanctuary grounds all the time. Well worth your while. Well, we're here while looking out for them while you're here. If you're not quite sure how to identify one, don't just look at their size. Obviously, she's a massive bird, 
Bitch, he's flying way up in the sky, trying to pick this ice cream. Best way to do it is look at their tails. Now, you watch, next time she lands, you'll it's see her fan, her tail out. And you'll see that diamond or that wedge shape in the tip of the tail there. Really good example of that just there. That's the best way to help you identify a wedge tail eagle. If you think you've seen one, you can see it as a gliding and soaring quite effortlessly out there. Nice and high. Alright, we're going to get one last chance to look at that tail. I'm going to call her up onto this branch here. And she'll fan that tail out again. You'll be able to see that shape that I'm talking about. There we go. Nice job, Max. How about a big round of applause? You've done a good job for us today. The kids are always open for those eagles. If you don't hear the challenges, they do need a helping hand from you. If you can change your ways to help protect trees, the habitat, you're not just helping these beautiful birds like the red-tailed black cockatoos, but a whole lot of other wildlife right around Australia. So imagine the difference you could make just by changing one small thing like switching to using 100% recycled toilet paper. Remember to follow through with your clip just by texting the word white to the number on the banner. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. <laughs> but before we finish it up and leave, I would ask you all just please remain seated just for another couple of minutes. We've got some of our staff members who are going to come down and help usher people out so we're not all bunching up too close no, together on our way out. Too. So just wait for your instructions and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.